A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an exhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will your heart be. Gird your loins and light your lamps, and be like the servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table, and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared. For at an hour you do not expect, the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us? or for everyone. And the Lord replied, Who then is the faithful and prudent steward, whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly I say to you, the master will put the servant in charge of all his property. But if that servant says to himself, my master is delayed in coming, and begins to beat the men servants and the maid servants to eat and drink and get drunk, then that servant's master will come on an unexpected day and at an unknown hour and will punish that servant severely and assign him to a place with the unfaithful. That servant, who knew his master's will, but did not make preparations nor act in accord with his will, shall be beaten severely. And the servant, who was ignorant of his master's will, but acted in the way deserving of a severe beating, shall be beaten only lightly. Much will be required of the person entrusted with much, and still more will be demanded of the person entrusted with more. The Gospel of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, today's first reading sets the tone right away with reference to the night of the Passover. The Passover, you'll recall, is God's act of liberation, act of deliverance of his people Israel from slavery in Egypt. The Passover commemorates liberation. The Passover commemorates an oppressed people receiving the Lord's help and protection. God defending the weak. God having mercy 
on those who fear him, on those who hope in his love. Well, pa- Passover, then, Passover is the pattern of God's way, of God's will. This is God's plan, and it's good for his people, for their liberation and for their joy. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen to be his own, proclaims the psalmist. Blessed the people who put their faith, who put their hope in the will of God, in the plan of God, knowing it's for their own good, for their liberation and joy. The psalmist also proclaims, see the eyes of the Lord are upon those who fear him, not, not fear in the way that we think of fear today, but fear of the Lord as the children of Israel understood fear of the Lord. That is, respecting and, and honoring God by doing his will, by placing our hope in him, by knowing he's all good and deserving of all our love, and so waiting for him trusting in him. Abraham is a model of this. Abraham is blessed because he put his faith, his hope, in the will of God, in the plan of God, knowing that God's will, God's plan, is for his own good, for his liberation, and for his joy. Abraham feared the Lord. That is, he respected and honored the Lord God by doing his will. This was Abraham's treasure. When the Lord called Abraham to go to the place he would receive as an inheritance, Abraham didn't know where he was going. He didn't have a map. He didn't have GPS. He sojourned by faith like a pilgrim to a homeland. This is what it means to believe, friends, putting our faith, our hope in the will of God, in the plan of God, knowing it's for our good, knowing it's for our liberation and for our joy. If only this were our treasure as it was for Father Abraham. If only we were servants of God's loving will, of God's benevolent plan for us. If only we were vigilant, vigilant to respond to the Lord's call with trust and with confidence even though we don't know all the details, even though we don't have perfect understanding, but knowing that the plan is liberation, knowing that God helps the weak, and God shows mercy to those who fear him and those who hope in his love, knowing that he's all good and deserving of all our love, And so waiting upon him, trusting in him. For the baptized, life isn't what we calculate for ourselves or the product of our own fashioning or design, but rather the response to a call. Like Abraham, You and I are called to advance along the way, not knowing what the future holds for us, but walking by faith, not weighed down by belongings and by money bags that wear out, but like pilgrims sojourning to the homeland promised us, the city of God, 
the city that he's prepared for us, the kingdom he's pleased to give us. And there, you know what the Lord God does for his faithful and vigilant servants? He waits on them. He has them recline at table. Is this not what the Lord does for us at every Eucharist? The new Passover, which is a foretaste and promise of that eternal city that God in his goodness is pleased to give us. Blessed indeed are we called to the Supper of the Lamb.